the LeBron Kobe thing. What, what do they do differently? How, how would you talk about them personality-wise, talent-wise? We're talking to the best players ever to play this game on the planet. You've had a chance now to, to coach them both. Let's go. You, you've seen Kobe now for three weeks regular season. Differences personality-wise and on the basketball floor. Personality-wise, they're, they're both good guys. Uh, the, the one thing about LeBron that's different than Kobe, LeBron likes to have a, a ton of people around him all the time. It's almost like uh, he's in high, high school and college. He's in college, and, and, and he preferred to live in the frat house with you know, 15, 16 of his buddies, and everything that he does includes all of his, his buddies all the time. And uh, Kobe's probably the, the opposite. Kobe is uh, a guy that people would say, uh, if he was in college, is probably more uh, is, is mature beyond his years. You know, is a guy that may uh, go watch a movie by himself or, or go, go watch a movie with a friend or two and, and keep his group real small. And so so he's, he's, uh, he's more business, he's more business like than LeBron, but both those guys are competitive and they both want to win. You know, Kobe said that he's enjoying their working relationship with you because you put in so much time, and that's him. I mean, he's work. Let's go, Kobe. Let's work. What's the harshest thing you've said to Kobe so far? What's the harshest thing you've had to reprimand him for the basketball floor of practice? How's he taking it back? <laughs> the biggest thing is probably gambling defensively in the backcourt. You know, he's a very good steel guy, and you know, I'm not big on steals, and I always feel if you go for a steal and you miss it, you really hurt your team. And uh, so that, that's happened a couple of times, and I've had to take a couple of timeouts just to remind them not, not to do that. Uh, what's, what's the, the fine line on, man, you, you got to carry us, and man, you got to pass the ball, kind of a thing? It, it, there is that fine line, and, and it's just based on feel, you, yeah. you know. Uh, and, and I, you know, we've had this conversation numerous times. Uh, I believe, you know, coach him in a short amount of time and, and just watch him in practice in, in these games. And even at his age now, he, he could average over 40 points a game. Like this is this is the truth. He, this man could average over 40 points a game if he wanted to. Uh, the, the tough part about it is, you know, in the, in the game of basketball, if you have a guy that's averaging that many points and you have other good players around you, then, then it's tough because those guys sometimes they get to stand in and they, or they may get disinterested or they may rely too much on Kobe and I can't have that happen because come playoff time you're going to face some pretty good defensive teams and if, and if a guy carries you there averaging 40 plus and you're facing good defensive teams and they scheme against him uh, and guys aren't used to scoring or knowing how to score in tough situations you're, you're going to run into some problems come playoff time. Hey, uh, try, try to, to tell everybody, give them kind of a sneak peek. Like when we're watching the game on Thursday, and you're going up against Miami. Offensively, what should the folks watch that is not like a normal thing? Take them inside something. When you're on the offensive end going against the Miami defense, you know, so they know, hey, the Lakers are running this right or they're not, or they can take advantage of this matchup. What's something that they can look for on Thursday when, when the Lakers have the basketball? Well, it, the, the biggest thing that Miami does, they use their athleticism and their quickness and their aggressiveness. So uh, they will trap us. They will pick us up full court at times. And so we're going to have to do a good job at two things. Uh, our spacing is going to have to be very good. And Explain that a little bit. Explain spacing. spacing. It, it, it generally, you don't want anybody on the floor, uh, at, at least, you know, unless it happens quickly, you don't want anybody on the floor uh, 15 feet or closer uh, together. Uh, because now if you start to creep uh, close to one another, or if you get inside that 15-foot barrier, now we, we, we say one guy can guard two. So uh, if you and I are sitting right here and this coffee table is a defender, well, obviously he can guard both of us because our spacing is poor. So we, we need to be about 15 feet apart, so now he has to make a decision, especially when the ball is passed, and who he has to go cover. And uh, if you can have one guy guard the two of us right here, that means we, there are three other offensive players out there, four other defensive players out there, and so now those four defensive players can trap and all that other stuff while this one guy guards them. So our spacing is going to have to be very good against that aggressive defensive athletic, defensive athletic team. And then uh, we're going to have to make sure that uh, we take care of the ball too. Because if we don't, uh, 
our bad passes and our turnovers will lead to easy dunks for them to transition. Has that been just driving you crazy? What, what is the deal with the turnovers on this team? I mean, it's been, there was 27 in one game, and you're averaging up like 16, 17, 18 a game. Why? Why is this team having such Problem. You know, it goes back to the, just a new system. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I put in three new plays two days ago, and we ran them a ton yesterday. <laughs> and I, you know, just like anybody else at any other job, if you experience something new, there's a learning curve that you go through in order to perfect it or become at a point where, where you're pretty good at it. And, and right now we're not, uh, but we are getting better. So uh, it, it, it has a lot to do with that.